What's up, everyone? This is Lavinia at She Be Showing Up on Twitter and host of the Just Thinking Out Loud podcast. And you are listening to the What Up Doe Show with my friend Tim Wilson. Keep it live. Commentary on sports, entertainment, and alternative news. Hey, come on with it. You know what it is. Hey, it's the What Up Do, the What Up Do, the What Up Do show. Yo, What Up Do, it's your boy T. Wilson, and I am live on a Monday morning, and I am kicking it with you. Uh, you know I love Monday. It's my favorite day of the week because it is an opportunity to get it right one more again, one more again, like the old folks used to say back in the hood. One more again, baby. Not one more time, one more again. I want to say big up to all my people out there on Meerkat that's joining me uh, because uh, the Meerkat watchers can see this show live as it happens as long as the stream continues. Because one thing about Meerkat is that I keep losing my damn stream, and that drives me crazy, and I don't understand why it just does. Anyway, let's get to some birthdays for today. I got uh, the beautiful Lavina Ford. What's going on, Lavina? I uh, also got the beautiful Pamela Bomar. What's up, Pam Bomar? Yo, back, they both from back in my hood in southwest Detroit. Uh, big up to the beautiful Monique Baker, the beautiful Regina. Gina Smith, uh, the be- a bunch of beautiful people, the beautiful Cheryl Mathis, and an old friend of mine that I love like a sister. Oh, I had a crush on her from the first day I saw her, the beautiful Geraldine uh, Ellington, Miss G. What's going on, G Money? What's going on, Jerris? <laughs> That's all the birthdays I got. So happy birthday to. All of y'all. Mm-hmm. And on that note, man, that's all I got for birthdays. So let's go on and get this party started. I took a long time getting into the show this morning, so let's go head down with some uh, with some sports rundown. What up, Joe? Sports. Charlie Lloyd got the United States on the board first, then she did it again. And again, Lloyd scored a first-half hat trick, and Lauren Holiday and Tobin Heath each scored goals as the U.S. defeats Japan 5-2 in Vancouver, British Columbia, to earn the 2015 Women's World Cup. Yeah! The crowd goes wild. I didn't do the crowd noise. I should have been prepared for that. Anyway, the win breaks a tie with Germany for the most World Cups in history which is three, and is the United States first since 1999, and I lost my stream for the fourth time this morning on Meerkat. I hate this. I hate you, Meerkat, because you keep losing my stream as I'm rolling along. Anyway, speaking of explosions, New York Giants defensive end Jason Pierre-Paul reportedly suffered a hand injury while lighting fireworks on the 4th of July. Sources say Pierre-Paul has injured, uh, has, has severe burns on his palm and tips of three fingers, and one finger is being tested for nerve damage on his right hand. Uh, he didn't lose any fingers, and doctors believe there will be no permanent damage or disfigurement in his hands. Still unfortunate and still scary. And just as NBA free agency looks to be winding down. <laughs> the Detroit Pistons. Make a name for themselves. Detroit! 
They re-signed Reggie Jackson to a massive five years deal. The two sides agreed on a contract worth $80 million. Detroit! This development is certainly a sign that the Pistons are confident Jackson will be their point guard of the future. It's also vindication for the 25-year-old after he turned down a four-year offer from Oklahoma City Thunder last year that would have paid him roughly $48 million. I am delivered! What up, Doe Entertainment? Kim Kardashian is enraged that a photo agency is hawking pictures it claims to show her laying naked at her pool. I like big butts. And she's threatened to haul their asses in the court. I like big butts. Kim's lawyer, Marty Singer, fired off a letter to X-17, an L.A. paparazzi agency, claiming the company is hawking pics that were taken in a helicopter hovering over Kim's Hidden Hills home. Singer claims uh, the photographer broke the law by taking the pic from a chapter with a telephoto lens. Of course, no one has seen pictures of Kim Kardashian naked before. How dare they put pictures of her out there naked? She does not want the world to see her butt as a naked. That isn't cool. I like big butts. Singer warned X-17 if they sell the pics, they will face big damages for invasion of privacy. Since we're keeping up with the Kardashians, Khloe Kardashian's dipping into the hoops pool again. She and NBA superstar James Harden hit Las Vegas for the 4th of July. It's interesting, though. Because Chloe is still legally married to Lamar Odom. And there's been zero movement forward in their divorce. As for how Chloe and uh, Harden hooked up, Harden was one of the coaches for Kanye's basketball birthday bash at Staples Center. Ballin'! Donald Trump. Knew he'd get attacked from all sides when he threw his hat into the presidential ring. But he says he was taken by surprise by the NASCAR boycott. Trump said he knew he'd be a target, but he felt NASCAR was simpatico with his views on immigration. The interesting thing is Trump is number one in the polls for all Republican candidates, according to Fox. According to Fox. 7.30. Come experience pop, pop, pop culture from the dark side. On the 7.30 show with me, Latona. Ooh, I, I need my cigar on this. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Betamax, and VHS. Yo, what's up with your boy? I'm just a man with a fork and a world full of soup. No, I don't need no damn medicine. Latone Hart, he may need medicine. Check me out on the 7.30 show podcast. What up, Joe News? In Horn, Australia, uh, a school teacher received heavy criticism from students and parents after killing two rabbits in front of the class. Break yourself, fool! It's part of a biology lesson this week. After killing the rabbits, he proceeded to dissect the rabbits. Break yourself, fool! The middle school teacher breeds rabbits during his free time and brought the animals to work so he, so that he could kill them in front of the class. Break yourself, fool! On Monday, he killed one of the ab, Adam, blah, 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 Adam's apple. On Monday, he killed one of the animals with a captive boat stun gun and repeated the lesson in front of a different class the next day. When other students had heard about the gruesome lecture, they reportedly offered to buy the animal from the teacher in an effort to save its life. He is said to have refused the offer because he planned to eat the animals for dinner later. You're taking food off of my table, kids. Hell no, you can't uh, buy the damn animals. That's my dinner. You suck, you jackass. You really do suck for that, you jackass. Anyway, my meerkat is screwing up big time. I'm a little upset about it. I really am. I kind of like doing this on Meerkat. But my stream just won't work. It's crappy, man. I don't understand. I'm doing everything right. There's nothing wrong. It starts and then it stops. 
for whatever reason, it starts and then it stops. Anyway, in Purchase, New York, customers weren't laughing when they opened their Sobe tea and, uh, fruit, and fruit juice to find an alarming message. Help me, I'm trapped in a Sobe factory under the bottle caps. The beverage company includes humorous messages under its bottle caps, some of which are submitted by the public. But some customers didn't find that message in, the que- in question all that amusing. Instead, some were worried that someone really may have been trapped in the factory or forced to work there. One customer posted a photo of her cap to Sobe's Facebook page asking, Is this for real? I need to know! Sobe responded to her post, Hi there. We're sorry that our cap slogan caused you concern. That was certainly not our intention. These things are intended to give our customers a little smile or pause for thought. Not offense. Well, they uh, enjoy their favorite Silbay beverage. We're planning on removing this cap slogan from our current rotation. However, we'll take some time. It'll take a while for existing stock to run through the market. In the meantime and in between time, you do your thing and I do mine. Deal with it. <laughs> That's on both In Los Angeles, California. News from Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. (laughs) A French bakery had received an overwhelming order of one million donuts to be sent to a customer based in the United States. The order to be sent to Los Angeles comes into uh, industrial baking company Berladon just weeks after another American client based in Las Vegas reportedly recommended their sweet deep fried products. The record making order order comes as, as a bit of a surprise as the circular treat is considered more American. But then we have the best French fries. So what's the big deal? In Charlie, North Kakalaki. Bubble Wrap just lost a little bit of its fun after its maker, Sealed Air Corps, announced a new pop free version. What? You don't do a pop free bubble wrap. It's not American. Sealed Air Corps introduced a new line of bubble wrap. It's calling iBubble. The packaging material takes up uh, about one-fiftieth of the space of traditional bubble wrap, making it cheaper to ship and easier to store. iBubble looks like bubble wrap, but it's completely flat. Customers use a pump, which at first will cost about $5,000 to inflate iBubble before using it for shipping. Once inflated, iBubble won't burst or make a satisfying popping noise that is un-American. It's the whole purpose of bubble wrap, so that the kids can pop the damn bubbles and go pa 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 Yo, this is Spirit G of the G-Spot Podcast Network. You're listening to the number one fan by default, since he's the only fan left on earth tim wilson of the what up though show somebody come get y'all uncle in victoria british columbia an unnamed homeless man who returned over two thousand dollars in lost cash to authorities has decidedly turned down a separate five thousand donation look at me boy don't you smoke crack insisting that it goes to charity after hearing of the man's initial, initial, initially a recognized deed, Victoria local Mike Kelly decided to launch a GoFundMe page in his honor, raising thousands of dollars from citizens throughout Canada. Ain't nobody got time for that. This prompted Constable Alex Berube to begin looking for the intended recipient. Um, did he find him? I don't know. After hearing this story and seeing how this case touched so many people, I took a personal interest in finding this man, looking for him everywhere while on and off shift. 
the Ruby said in a Royal Canadian Mounted Police press release. I finally caught up with him on Monday and I told him about the fundraising organized by Mike Kelly of Victoria Buzz and that he had thousands and thousands of dollars awaiting on him. And his response surprised me yet again when he said, Ain't nobody got time for that. He insisted. He didn't ask how we collected. He insisted. He asked me how to donate it to our place and other food service providers for people in need. Police asked the man to take an extra night to think about accepting the private donation and return the next day. Because indeed... Look at me, boy! Don't you smoke crack! But when he did, he reportedly remained steadfast in his decision to donate the funds. Instead of money, he asked for a job. And he's yet to find a job. Give the damn man a job already. He doesn't want to beg, so instead of begging for him... Put his ass to work. It's what he wants, and it's the right way for him to go. Stop trying to offer him charity when he's offering offering the charity to others. If you want to be charitable to this man, take his advice and give him a job. He can be a cop. These cops are not doing the bang-up job themselves. Let him do something. Let him clean up around the office. It doesn't matter. The man just wants work. Give him work, for Christ's sake. Help him. Help help himself. That's all he's asking. There's nothing wrong with that. That's noble. Support it. Hey, everybody. This is Jerry Taylor from the You Name It podcast, and you're listening to the Reverend Al Sharpton on... Oh, shoot. That's right. You're listening to the What Up Do, What Up Do, What Up Do show. And it is now time for a What Up Do closing commentary. Okay. So my commentary is normally on some type of uh, hot news story. Well, that's all going to change today. Because I had the weirdest thing happen yesterday. On Sundays, we record uh, the uh, Unusual Suspects episode, and I I try to get it out on Wednesday mornings in place of the What Up Dose show. Yesterday, things went awry. They started off with um, Dino Red was part of the show, and our, our four members, cast members, came to the show. Our suspects were Enrique Black, Dino Red, Kian Dold out of Ireland and Mike Eager of the uh, Eager to Be Healthy podcast. Okay, but when Dino got there, he said, "Why are you starting so early?" And I said, "Hey, we only got to do I start we'll set up an, early, an hour ahead so that everybody can get in, get settled, and you know we can go over some of the ground rules." Blah blah blah. And he's like, "Man, it's two. So, in other words, he's two hours behind me, and he thought that we were doing the things in the time in his time zone." And not in my time zone. Uh, he he vehemently apologized. And said he he he's double booked. He he's unable to do it because he really made a mistake in time. So here I am in the last hour trying to scramble. So I was like, okay, cool. Anyway, so that was the first flub of our epic fail. So we scrambled and we scrambled and we finally uh, got somebody. And I, I got, a, not only did I get somebody, but I got a killer. I got Ricky Hines to come in. I came back to the group like, y'all in trouble. I didn't expect to get Ricky Hines. But I got Ricky Hines. And he's uh, he's the truth, and he's going to bring it. So y'all might be in a little bit of trouble. Right? So they're like, uh-oh. We might be in a little bit of trouble here. Right? And then my internet went down and I and the whole thing shut down. My computer went crazy. Everything shut down on my side. 
So I'm scrambling to get to my phone. A few people, uh, you know, trying to contact who I could to let them know, hey, I'm coming right back. My computer just shut down. I had to reboot my system and get back in. And I'll create another room and bring everybody back in. So everybody's at the time panicking. Everybody I can't get in touch with is panicking like, the hell's going on? Ricky's like, what the hell is this? What you invite me to? What's going on? Right? So everything's going crazy now. We finally get everybody back in. And uh, we have an epic episode. Ricky comes right in on fire. And um, we had some beef because there was some some differing opinions on a couple of the topics all the questions were pretty heavy i had a lot more energy in this show than i did in my previous episode it was by far easily the best episode so far easily the best episode of unusual suspects to date michael eager went out first round it was down to enrique black Ricky Hines and Kieran Dold. Kieran Dold was surprisingly good. He was bringing it. And he was hilarious. So we had a ball. Enrique Black dropped out. Second round. And the finals came down to Ricky Hines against Kieran, Kieran Dold. I'm trying to get his name right. And it was close. It was a very, very close. It was up in the air. It really was to a point where I didn't know who to go with. And at the slightest flub of contradiction, Kieran Dold eliminated himself. And what was... I mean, it was that was the best final matchup since La- Latone and Murray Riley Jr. was a was a very good final matchup. That was the that was an epic final round on the on the first episode. This one was right up there with that one, and the winner was Ricky Hines after coming in at the last minute. I mean, a last minute implant into the show, and he ends up winning it. It was, I mean, when I say it was the best episode, easily the best episode. So afterwards, we came in, we started chit chatting a little bit, and we closed out the show. And I said, thanks to everybody that's going on. And then I go say, okay, guys, this is it. Thanks for coming out. You know, we, we did our little private speak afterwards. And I went to stop the recording and realized that I never started the recording. The Unusual Suspects, Ep 3, turned into The Unusual Suspects, Epic Fail. Yo, man, that's all I got, man. I just want to get out of here, yo. And I want to say big ups to my man, Latone Hardy. He hosts a show called The 730 Show. Uh, he uh, can be heard on Spreaker.com, Stitcher.com, and iTunes. Big up to Dino Red of The Shiznit Show. You can catch it on the Shiznitshow.com, And also, you can catch it by way of the Red Rock Podcast Network on Stitcher.com. Big up to um, uh, Spirit G of the G-Spot Network. Um, you can catch him on the GSPN.com and also on Stitcher.com. Uh, big up to uh, my girls, Lavinia Shibi Shonuf and Bajetto Rising of the Just Thinking Out Loud podcast on uh, Stitcher.com. A uh, big up again and thanks to all my usual, unusual suspects from yesterday Mike Eager, Kieran Dold, Ricky Hines, and Enrique Black. Uh, you guys were awesome. I'm going to bring those guys back for another episode. But in two weeks, be on the lookout. We are having our first because I am counting that show. It did happen. It's not recorded. It's the best show that will never be heard. 
but it did happen. So Ricky Hines does get credit for winning that episode. So in two weeks, we're going to have the Battle Royal of the Unusual Suspects with uh, Ricky Hines, Latone Hart, and Kip Clark uh, battling it out for the biggest win of the month. That's all I got, man. Again, I want to thank you all for coming for, for listening and not coming out. You didn't actually come anywhere. But I want to thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you. And that's all I got. Peace out. Press your crease out. Keep the police out while I bust this niece out. And I'm out of here like last year. <laughs> Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. What up, dude?